Good evening and welcome. I'm Sheila Balgobin, Principal of Simply Improve Health, and I help people to train better and longer and recover more quickly, have improved sleep, and enjoy general quality of health, better quality of health, using body products and simple techniques. Uh, as you know, the last couple of weeks I've been talking about, uh, or the last couple of lives I've been talking about um, different aspects of my course, and I'll be sharing a, a different parts and information about the course over the next several lives, just up until the, to just before Christmas. But today um, I'm talk, going to talk about uh, the different ways that the unconscious can speak to us. The unconscious um, is the deepest and most knowledgeable part of ourselves. It knows all about us and it knows all about the environment that surrounds us. Whereas the conscious mind can only take in so much information at one time without suffering from burnout, from information overload. And so the unconscious will use various means to get our attention to the things that it's been clocking day and night while our conscious mind is is busy with it, getting on with the, the daily grind if you will of life now there are as many different ways that the unconscious will get our attention from simple things like slips of the tongue or what we actually call Freudian slips named for Sigmund Freud where we're saying one thing, but or intending to say one thing, but something else actually comes out. <laughs> um, and uh, we, we've all done that, you know. Um, and particularly after in during the holidays, that seems to be um, a, very common. Uh, particularly, people are enjoying themselves and eating and drinking quite a lot. Um, and alcohol happens to loosen the inhibitors that we normally use to censor ourselves. So as they say in uh, the Latin saying goes, in vino veritas, in wine, there is truth, is exactly for that reason, because it, it loosens the controls that we would normally um, exert over our, ourselves um, and lets the, the more unconscious um, emotions and thoughts come to the forefront. So remember that over the holidays. If you want it, if you don't want to offend anybody, <laughs> watch how much you drink because it loosens your tongue. Uh, another way that the unconscious may speak um, to us is through what's called muscle testing or kinesiology. Now, as a therapist, I've used that in the past to, to be able to um, get past the defenses that uh, people may be throwing up um, in counseling work. Uh, for example, I was doing uh, drug and alcohol counseling and I was working with this gentleman and despite all of the work that we were doing and he was really positive and, and doing what we were saying, he doesn't, didn't seem to be shifting at all. And it suddenly occurred to me that maybe what he was saying and what he was actually feeling, there was a disconnect there. So I, do, I did muscle testing, and what muscle testing is, which kinesiology, is that you use the non-dominant hand, which means if I'm left-handed, would, I would use my right hand of the person and ask a question. First, you would, um, first of all, you need to establish a baseline, so to know um, what yes, a yes um, re reply would be and what a no would be. Yes usually means that the arm is quite strong. No means that you, with two fingers you can li literally push it down because there's no strength there. Um, it works on the, the, the principle of, of electromagnetic energy flowing through the body. And when it's short-circuited by a negative answer of some kind, it breaks and it becomes weak. Now, but, and I asked this gentleman, did he really want to get better? Um, as I said, he wasn't, he wasn't really, he was going through the motions, but not really getting anywhere. And when I tested him, the answer came back, no, he didn't really want to stop drinking. And that, that shocked him actually into actually making some changes and being able to cut down on his drinking. But 
sometimes what we're saying and what we're and um, is not in sync with what we're actually feeling and the the unconscious will find ways to let us know that um, another way is um, through um, our emotional states or lack of them um, when <clears throat> when we're disturbed in some way emotionally, either our, 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 we become deadened emotionally, we become deadened, we can't re react to anything, or we become hyper-emotional, we react to everything. Um, and that, that means that there's some kind of something that's, that's keeping us from being on, on an even keel, it's throwing us to one side or the other. So it's, it could be physical things as well. I mean, physical symptoms. Um, I remember ages ago, um, I was feeling what I knew what was a distinct feeling of discomfort um, in the area of my spleen. Now, um, I eat pretty healthily. There's no reason for me to have trouble with my spleen, but I thought about what spleens mean in, on an energetic level and spleens um, when we vent our spleen or um, <laughs> we're literally kind of discharging anger and I had to think about that I was like well am I angry about something I actually asked myself that am I angry about something and an image kind of floated up in my mind it's like hell yeah I'm angry about this <laughs> And I actually felt what I felt like a little bubble just kind of go plick inside in the area of the spleen. It was as if I was holding on to a, a little bubble of anger and it was waiting um, either to be fed or to be gotten rid of. And fortunately, I got rid of it. Um, you know, because what does it, we don't say, what we don't express turns inward and starts to, to work on us. Um, instead of being discharged and worked on and gotten rid of, um, that stress starts to build up inside the body, can actually harden into physical symptoms or disease. So that's, that's one way um, that physically we can be, um, that indications of um, a disturbance or some kind of information is trying to be surfaced from the unconscious mind. But there, it, it can also do things in funny sorts of ways too. Um, a girlfriend of mine years ago uh, was resisting having to do some inner work, shall we say. And everything kept <laughs> coming at her from crystals coming her way to other information that she really needed to do this inner work and she was resisting. And one thing my my friend loved to do was uh, rollerblade. And she was always having these little niggling injuries. She would injure her, fall and injure her wrist, or she would fall and, and sprain her ankle. Finally, one day, and I kept saying, you better <laughs> slow down and do this stuff because you're going to end up being forced to sit still. And sure enough, <laughs> a few weeks later, I get a call. She's got a broken ankle and she's laid up for, I don't know, eight weeks or however many weeks it was. Um, and at that point, she was forced, absolutely forced, to, uh, to do this inner work. And it was exactly what she needed. She came out the other side better for it, but she kept resisting. And the unconscious will make it, its um, objectives known one way or the other. Um, I mean, it could be for anything. It could be for buying a house. A cousin of mine kept getting messages about contacting somebody about buying her house until she actually contacted them. And this person kept turning up and turning up and turning up in front of her, no matter what time of day or night, this person kept appearing until she finally contacted them and bought the house. And then the person, she never saw them again. So the unconscious has all kinds of ways. Hoi Weber. Boom. Um, the unconscious has all kinds of ways of, of speaking to us, but are we paying attention? 
as one niece of mine likes to say, you know, God's always sending us emails, but do we open them? Um, and that's part of the problem. We get little signals and little hints and little whisperings. And, you know, afterwards we say, I knew I should have. I, sh I, I just felt I should have. Then why didn't you? Why don't you trust yourself enough to believe that there's something inside of you that is greater and has a broader vision than you and your finite conscious mind has? You know, I mean, how many times have we second-guessed ourselves and said, oh, I knew I should have done this or I should have thought that or I should have said that. That's because we don't trust ourselves enough to believe that there's some part of us that is wiser and has, can see the broader picture and is able to make intelligent decisions. We leave it to our doctors, our lawyers, our preachers, our teachers, um, and then forget how to trust ourselves. And the unconscious is that part of ourselves that is greater and deeper and is able to, to give us the, the clues and answers that we need to really live the, our lives in the best way possible. Now, um, as I say in my, in my course, I, I use the particular medium of dreams, but there are many ways that the unconscious can speak to us. And if you, you want a, a quick way of doing that, and I think maybe a fun way, um, is to, um, to write in a journal or in a piece of paper, if there's something that particularly that's uh, um, troubling you, to write the question with your dominant hand, the hand you normally write with. And then transfer the pen or pencil to your other hand. For me, it would be my right hand because I write with my left. And then wait, just wait and see what comes up and, and write with that hand. Now, of course, it will look like a three-year-old is trying to write because it's not the hand you normally write with. But it represents, on a psychological level, the less developed um, or less used parts of ourselves, of our inner lives. And so it can tap into very, very deep um, kinds of uh, emotions that, that may have been forgotten or suppressed over the years. So there's a little tip for you to find out what's going on in your <laughs> um, at a deeper level. Try writing um, with that your non-dominant hand. There, um, you can use flower essences or vibrational essences to be able to tap into the unconscious, because they work at the emotional level. Essences um, will often sh present to you. Uh, what's going on in different ways. It may be certain thoughts come to mind. You may dream more, which is why as part of my course, I use essences as one of the tools to be able to, to help people with their dream lives. So that's, that's yet another means that to be able to tap into the unconscious mind and find out really what's going on with you. Um, we're very good at, at wearing masks and, and, putting on all kinds of psychological and, and even physical layers in order to, to be able to protect ourselves from feeling pain. And that, that's a normal thing. But when it starts to uh, get in the way of our growth and development, then we need to start stop looking to other people to fix us and start to look within and see what is we're holding on to or what we need to develop to be able to become the, the best persons we're me meant to be. So I would challenge you to think about um, ways that the, the unconscious mind, your unconscious mind may have been speaking to you lately. Um, certain numbers maybe start to appear in your life or certain people you keep running into for some reason. Or um, you may, like me, during the summer, for no apparent reason, get pitched into the middle of the street to get you to, to get me to stop and, and think for, over some things. It could be many, many ways that, that the unconscious is trying to get your attention. It may be in your dreams as well, or in some cases, nightmares. But there's, it's always trying, knocking at the door, but are you opening it? Are you allowing it to, to come in and sit with you and have a conversation? 
So I would challenge you to think about that. And um, I, once we start to pay attention to the unconscious mind, it starts to um, make itself more clear um, to the point where hopefully that there is a, um, an equal relationship between the conscious and unconscious mind, which is, um, indicates balance. But um, there is a compensatory function between the unconscious and conscious mind. What we're not, when we're not being true to ourselves and acting in our truth, the unconscious mind is going to call you on it, um, whether it's knocking you flat in the street or um, causing you dreams to, to that keep repeating over and over until you get the message. So I leave that to you. Uh, I hope that was something of use to you. I'm always happy to hear your comments. So if you enjoyed this, leave a comment. If you have a question, um, leave that as well. If Drop some emojis on me, some love hearts, some thumbs up, some wows if you like. I like those too. Thank you so much for listening. I will be sharing on the next live um, another portion or component rather of the Dare to Dream delivery system that I use on my, my course. But until then, have a great evening, a wonderful week, and I'll see you again soon. Take care. Bye-bye.